Hi everyone. Um, I was holding out hope that um, a certain group of people would uh, admit that we are saved by believing the gospel and therefore if you have the testimony of Christ that you believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and rose again on the third day, that you are saved. But it doesn't seem that this is the case. Um, they say we're saved by believing the gospel out of one side of their mouth and then out of the other side um, denying that a brother in Christ is saved by believing the gospel. So which is it? Well, apparently they've chosen. It's whoever they deem um, as by their own judgment um, as uh, whether they're saved or not. It's not by what the word of God says. So they are denying the truth that is in God's word and coming up with their own method of determining who's saved and who's not. And in doing so have corrupted the gospel, turned it into a false gospel that says maybe you might be saved by believing the gospel, but no, not really because... Who knows? But I still haven't heard from anybody how you actually can be saved. They can't tell you. They won't tell you because it doesn't suit their purposes. Um, I don't want a gospel that may or may not save me. I want one that actually does save me 100% of the time. And that is what is given to us in the Bible. Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Um, but Jesus died for our sins, was buried and rose again on the third day by believing that. That is the guaranteed way of being saved by believing that truth. Believing that Jesus is who he says he is and did what he says he did. So, um, yeah, the uh, taking the way of Cain, they are denying um, the gospel, saying that it's not enough to save. And there's something else required. We don't know what that is. Um, and the way of Cain is hating your brother. So let's have a look at this article from uh, Institute for Creation Research. Um, Whoso boasteth, boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and win without rain, Proverbs 25, 14. Cain initially was a religious man, evidently proud of his achievements as a tiller of the ground that God had cursed. He assumed that God would be much impressed with the beautiful basket of his fruit of the ground that he presented as an offering unto the Lord. Cain became bitterly angry when God had not, had not respect to Cain and his offering. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, shedding the blood of an innocent lamb in substitution for his own sin and guilt before God, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Since faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Abel was merely obeying God's word, but Cain, proud and self-righteous in attitude, was presuming to offer up his own merits in payment for the privilege of coming to God. This was a false gift. However, with no meritorious value at all before God, the clouds and wind without rain, light clouds and, and wind without rain. The Apostle Jude warns against any such presumption, especially now that we can freely come to God through his own perfect Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Woe unto them, says Jude, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. This severe indictment um, was lodged against all who, like Cain, are superficially religious, but who, by their self-righteous resentment against God, are turning the grace of 
God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. We must not boast of our gifts to God, but only of his gift to us. So if your boast is, but I love God, I've loved him my whole life. Um, I am full of love. I love everybody. But then you hate a brother in Christ. You're offering your love to God. Um, he's not going... <laughs> He doesn't accept that. He accepts blood. And someone like David Benjamin who presents the blood and that is his only way of um, approaching God, that is what God accepts. We believe the gospel and are cleansed by the blood and that blood gives us access to God. It's the only acceptable sacrifice and to say that the blood is not enough for David, it's enough for you, but it's not enough for David, well, you're actually denying the power of the blood. Flat out, that is what you are doing. You are denying Jesus. I can't be any clearer about that. That is exactly what you are doing. Let's have a look at Jude. Jude. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Notice that, earnest, earnestly contend, and that is what David and the rest of us are doing. For there are certain men or women crept in unawares who were before of old or ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men or women, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. They are denying his blood. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains un under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accu accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these evil these speak evil of those sorry, but these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, uh, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that can and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. 
But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves in on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his, the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God and Saviour be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. So, if you're receiving dreams from God and words from God that condemn a brother in Christ who believes on the blood, believes the gospel, brings the blood of Jesus as his way of approaching God, then you are not hearing from God. You are hearing from another spirit or your defiled flesh. It's just ridiculous that anyone could say, God told me, either in my spirit audibly or in a dream that there's a bunch of Christians who really, you know, focus on the word and the, the gospel, that they are all having an orgy? Really? Or that David Benjamin is a pandemic who's going around infecting and killing people? Or that he is a snake or a skunk? Or uh, what else was there? Uh, he keeps falling asleep and has black eyes. That's the, the latest dream. Sounds like a demon to me. Not a believer on Christ. Except a believer believes the gospel. So uh, if you're saying they're a demon, then you're not hearing from God. Um... The, the stuff that they have been saying is, is so disgusting, so foul. Um, it's just unbelievable. And they are, have gone the way of Cain. They are denying the blood. They are changing the gospel. And I hope they're saved. If they, believe the, if they ever did believe the gospel... That, they, that Jesus died for their sins, was buried and rose again on the third day, then they are saved. But they can be deceived. Christians can be deceived. Christians can listen to another spirit. They can give themselves over to um, hearing from another spirit, uh, to false doctrine and get carried away by it and have their conscience seared. It's all possible. You can be saved and and totally fall into deception and that is at least what has happened in this case they um, if you're receiving dreams and words all the time constantly all the time but you're not going to the Bible and you're using your dreams and words from God supposedly um, as your measurement of what is true and what is not true, um, then that's false because you're not going to the Bible. They've turned dreams and and words from God into supposedly words from God into their Bible. I I don't hear the Bible taught in their videos all I hear is the latest thing that they've heard in their dreams or audibly and God has spoken in his word and if you're not matching up what you're hearing with that it's not from God 
and it's definitely not matching up. It's, it's totally mischaracterizing God to say that he would give you these kind of dreams. I mean, seriously, it, it's just foul what they're saying now and it's gone way too far. And yeah, I kind of lost hope that they would, they are going to come back to the truth. And I'm, I pray that they do, but at the moment, um, whether or not they're saved, um, they are to be marked and avoided and um, people need to recognise what is going on and um, people need to stop pretending they don't know what's going on and acting like it's just some personal disagreement when it's actually about the gospel. If you want to stand with these people, then you've got a gospel problem too. You need to get clear on that. You need to choose the side of that God is on, and that is his word. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.